What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Monday, November 6th edition of the NBA Lineup Generator video. I am your host, Adam Scherer. You can follow me on Twitter at ShipMyMoneyDFS. And we have a big 12-game NBA slate tonight to welcome us back from the weekend. Hopefully, we can find some good plays looking at this video. Now, keep in mind, with there being 12 games, we are still waiting on a lot of news. Things are absolutely going to change between now and lock. But you can use the promo code above my head on the screen, NBA Treat, or use the links or use the link below this video, whether you're watching on YouTube or Twitter, and put in the promo code above my head, NBA Treat, to get access to this lineup generator tool for just $4.99 for your first month. Um, so you will be able to do that, use it on your own with all of the information that we have as we get closer to lock. And we're going to take an early look at how things look right now, but most importantly, give you a look at how to use it as well and see if we have any overarching takeaways. We're going to start on DraftKings. And the first question you're going to get is to choose an ownership setting. Now, this is where you can tell it that you prefer chalky lineups. If maybe you're playing smaller field contests, balanced lineups, contrarian lineups, if you're playing the largest field. For me, I go to, or I prefer going to all lineups, but again, you can choose something else if you prefer. Here, if you want to lock a player into all of the lineups, you can. That's not part of my process, but you know, if you're playing three lineups and you know you want Dylan Brooks, go ahead and click him. Um, but that's, you know, again, not the way that I would go about it. I didn't mean to actually click in there. So I'm going to go back and start over on the screen. But um, yeah, normally I skip it. But again, that's how that works. Now, once you do that, it's going to start displaying lineups for you. You can see how much salary is used, the projected fantasy points, the ownership projection. Here down at the bottom, you have a sliding scale. So it shows you projection, you know, very pretty far over here on the right. Uh ownership, you know, kind of in the middle, a pretty balanced lineup here. Uh, and you can choose to save the lineup, discard the lineup. All of the lineups that you get are lineups that we we do all the simulations with our projections and our ownership projections on the back end. And then we're just giving you lineups that we grade out as profitable lineups long-term based on all of our data. And so you can just save or discard them. For this video, I'm just going to save the first 20 without really looking at them individually. And then we can look at them um, as a whole, see how our exposures look and take a look at some of those individual lineups. So in those first 20 lineups, uh, we get Zach Collins here as our highest owned player at 45%. Nothing wrong with that. Very strong center play at only 6,400 for San Antonio. Next, we get a $7,800 DeJounte Murray, 40% of the time. No problems there either. Uh, 7,800 is a very reasonable price tag for him. And his salary still hasn't adjusted all that much. Um, Dyson Daniels at 4,400. We are right now projecting him to start in place of CJ McCollum, who's out with a collapsed lung. That hasn't been announced yet. It could be Kyra Lewis. It could be somebody else. Uh, but if it is Daniels at 4,400, he does become an interesting value play. He will also become less important, most likely, as the day goes on and we get more news. But right now, we haven't really gotten a lot of value yet. So that Daniels does stick out a bit. Uh, Draymond Green is questionable. He's the only Golden State player on the injury report on the second half of their back-to-back. We're getting to quite a bit of him, uh, quite a bit over the field, and no real problems there if he does play. 6,200 is a reasonable price tag. Goga Batadze, 4,700, so his price tag increased from last time out, but he is still a good value, assuming that he remains in Orlando's starting lineup in place of Wendell Carter Jr. Tyrese Halliburton, fantastic play at 9,400, getting 30%. So there's nothing really that stands out amongst these top guys as far as you know, being overly scary or, or, or surprises, you know, yeah, we're over the field on green. We're making that assumption on Daniel starting for right now. Uh, that stuff certainly could change, but pretty solid names showing up here. You know, Dylan Brooks, 5,200 playing huge minutes. Yes. I realize it's Dylan Brooks, but it's a good game environment against Sacramento and he projects really well, 30%, not really a problem there. Um, looking at the highest owned players on the slate to try and see if maybe we are getting under the field on some guys. Uh, we have Batadze and Halliburton as the top two. Miles Turner is third at 26%. We're getting to 20% Turner, so nothing really noteworthy there. Uh, Jalen Johnson projected for 22% ownership. We are getting about 10%. So we're under the field on Jalen Johnson. That partially explains Draymond Green here. You know, if you're getting 22% ownership to Jalen Johnson and only around 10% to Draymond, $600 separating them, getting to some Draymond makes sense, assuming that he plays. Um, Jalen Suggs getting 19% ownership. We're right there at 25%. So nothing really that stands out too much uh, as far as our 
collective ownership goes. So we can take a look at some of the lineups here. Um, starting with this first one, 266 projected fantasy points. That is a very, it looks like middle of the pack projection. Uh, when you're just kind of scrolling through these lineups, there's a lot that are lower. There's some that are higher. 95% uh, ownership projection, so pretty contrarian lineup as well. Uh, we have Jalen Suggs at the top. No Markel Fultz again tonight for Orlando. Suggs coming in at 5,100. Just looks like a pretty good value. Josh Giddy, 8,200. Uh, Shea Gilgis-Alexander is now questionable, and he went through shoot-around. We still have SGA projected out. So Josh Giddy is not going to look as appealing as he does right now. Uh, we got 25% of him. That's something that probably will go away, assuming that Gildas Alexander does play. But uh, for right now, you know, with him projected out, we'd be getting to Giddy. DeAndre Hunter, Jalen Johnson, nothing wrong with those two guys. We like Zach Collins a lot. Dyson Daniels, perfectly fine value right now. Uh, Patrick Williams, kind of a prayer at 3,700. But, you know, it's not crazy to think that things, you know, could break his way. There are certainly minutes available. We've seen Torrey Craig in the starting lineup for Chicago. We've seen Alex Caruso uh, close over him. The first game that Craig started, Craig was out there the second game. There's nothing stopping Patrick Williams from being that guy occasionally, uh, but this is also something that probably just disappears as we get more value. And then Nikola Jokic with no Jamal Murray at 11-6. That's going to be a very strong payup option if you can get to it. Uh, looking at a lineup that you know projects a little bit better, but maybe is a little bit more popular. Jalen Suggs, DeJounte Murray, Royce O'Neal, again, kind of just not an exciting play at all at 5,200, but he just sort of fits in at low ownership. Draymond, Zach Collins, Trey Young, uh, pretty interesting tournament play here. You can play him with DeJounte or without, but 9,300, 5% owned. He is essentially the same price point as Tyrese Halliburton. Halliburton projects quite a bit better, but we know that Trey Young still has plenty of upside there. So at 5% ownership, you know, not a crazy idea to be using him in some individual lineups where you just want a high upside, low owned player. And then Dylan Brooks, Gogo Batadze rounding it out. Now, we're going to go do the same thing for FanDuel. And again, as a reminder, use promo code NBA Treat. Click the link below this video and then use the promo code NBA Treat to sign up. Get uh, this tool for $4.99 for your first week. Uh, it's perfect for you if you are a lower volume player, lower stakes player. Doesn't necessarily make sense for you to put out all the money for the full Sims tool. You're kind of just getting the final piece where the Sims tool is... The, our, our sims are running using our projections and all of that and then we're just giving you quality lineups um if you are playing you know 20 lineups or less it's perfect for you single entry it's great uh so definitely the best bang for your buck that you're going to get as far as tools go now looking at FanDuel, we are just going to save the first 20 lineups again and then take a look at the exposures there uh, we have on FanDuel the most Popular guys right now, Reggie Jackson at 50%. He's only 4,200. Goga Batadze, Zach Collins, Tyrese Halbert, and Zach Levine, the five highest owned players for the field. For us, we have DeJounte Murray at the top, coming in 60% of the lineups at 8,300. Pretty good price tag. A little surprised we're getting as much of him as we are. Um, I will say that if this were me, I wouldn't necessarily change anything. But like, if you wanted to, if you look at this and you say, all right, DeJounte Murray is a good play. He, we're getting 60% of him. He's only projected to be 12% owned. I only want 30% instead of 60. What you can do quickly to get there, you just click DeJounte Murray's name. It's going to high, It's going to move all of the DeJounte Murray lineups to the top and highlight them in yellow. You can just go through those, delete, you know, in this case, if you wanted 30 instead of 60, 60%, uh, de delete half of them, delete six, and then just go back, go to get more lineups and just click in six lineups that don't have DeJounte Murray. So it's pretty easy if you're trying to manipulate your exposures a little bit. Perfectly reasonable thing to do. That's how you would go about it. Uh, DeAnthony Melton showing up a lot for us as well. He's projected for 16% ownership. We're using him as a value option at 5,200, getting to 50%. Same thing. You could very be a very reasonable thing to do to say, look, I want 25%. Let's highlight DeAnthony Melton and get rid of some of those. Draymond, if he's in, showing up in 45% of our lineups. Josh Giddy, again, that's going to come down just because we have SGA projected out right now. Bruce Brown, Tyrese Halliburton. Interesting that we're only getting to 30% Reggie Jackson. He, like I said, is projected for 50%. Very clear value at 4,200 with no Jamal Murray tonight. But it seems like pricing is soft enough on FanDuel that we're kind of just finding our way around it. Also, if you were to go the path of, say, deleting half of these DeAnthony Melton lineups and replacing them, you probably would start getting more Reggie Jackson. Uh, it's likely that this Bruce Brown, DeAnthony Melton type plays are cutting into the Jackson. So, you know, that's something you can keep an eye on as well. Everything kind of works together. Now, Looking at the individual lineups, uh, this first one projects for 300 fantasy points, about 100% ownership projection. So relatively low owned. Uh, actually, the 
second lowest owned lineup that we have in these 20 300 fantasy points is relatively low compared to the other lineups, but nothing crazy. You know, you're giving up like six to eight fantasy points off of the highest projected ones. We have Halliburton at the top 23% owned looks very, very good. Even at 9,800 Jordan pool, 6,700 fan duel specific play getting 7% ownership. He's essentially unplayable on DraftKings, but you can get to a little bit on fan duel uh, taking on the Sixers tonight. Cole Anthony with no Markel Fultz, 6% owned plenty of tournament upside there. The Anthony Melton in a good spot against Washington. Cam Thomas and Royce O'Neal, um, kind of just you know low owned filler. Cam Thomas does give you plenty of scoring upside. That salary has adjusted to where it's not particularly appealing, but he is small forward eligible, which is really nice. Royce O'Neal, you're kind of just hoping he runs into some steals and threes. Aaron Gordon uh, could see an increased role offensively with no Jamal Murray. One thing to keep in mind with Gordon is that he is capable of doing pretty much everything on a basketball court. He's not, he's not typically asked to on this Nuggets team because Nikola Jokic already does everything. And then you have Murray, you have Michael Porter as a three-point shooter, but you certainly could see Gordon sort of step up and fill in some of the whatever is missing uh, in their offense tonight with Murray being out. He's capable of doing it. He's only 6K. Draymond, questionable, but very reasonably priced at 6,400 if he's in. And then a really interesting contrarian option at the bottom, Chet Holmgren, 8K price tag, 1% ownership. Again, SGA is expected to, or is questionable, did go through shoot around. I expect him to play. So Holmgren's uh, projection will come down a little bit once that's updated. But uh, one way or the other, we know Chet Holmgren has a high ceiling and he's just not getting any ownership. So that is an interesting way to be different in tournaments. This next lineup, we have a Reggie Jackson lineup. We're going to Luka at 12-5, only 1.5% owned. So a contrarian lineup simply by playing one of the three highest projected uh, players on the slate is always nice. Luka is questionable. If he were to get ruled out, Kyrie looks really good. Kyrie's also questionable. If he were to get ruled out, Luka looks even better. Uh, but, you know, assuming they're both in for right now, we're not expecting much ownership to go to Luka, but he'd still be an interesting tournament play. Cole Anthony, Melton, we already talked about them. 3% owned Anthony Edwards is always going to be appealing at small forward if you can afford him. Dylan Brooks, 5,700 playing huge minutes going up against the Kings looks good. Power forward Zach Collins looks fantastic. Draymond and then Goga Batadze, 4,800, a really strong value option. So a, a higher owned team, but projects a little bit better. And with it being a 12 game slate, the ownership, you know, it always matters, but this lineup, while it's more popular than the one we looked at before, it's not problematic in any way. You know, one and a half percent owned Luca, six and a half percent owned Anthony, three percent owned Edwards, eight and a half percent to Dylan Brooks. This is a perfectly contrarian lineup. You don't need to go more than that if you don't want to. Uh, so looks like a pretty good lineup. That's all I have for you today. Uh, thanks for checking out the video. Again, use the link below, whether you're watching on YouTube or on Twitter, and use promo code NBA Treat to get access to this tool for $4.99 for your first month. Other than that, thanks for checking out the video, and good luck on your lineups tonight.